All right. Good evening, everybody. Um, this is Jay from Take Dot Review. Um, I am joined, as usual, by John from the Bourbon Finder um, and the Whiskey Net, who's helping put this together, as usual. Um, happy Wednesday. Sorry. Normally, we do this on a Tuesday, um, but I recently got engaged, and with that comes photos, um, and we did those last night. So it's the only night it hasn't rained in Wisconsin for about the last three weeks, so it's kind of a do or die. But we are here this evening. We've got a couple of fun things lined up for you guys. You notice that John has three samples. We'll get to those in a minute. Uh, I'm trying to think. Yeah, we got some rum to drink. Uh, John has never had super funky rum. I have drank a lot of super funky rum. Um, and we've recently bought a bunch of casts of that, so we thought it'd be fun to uh, kind of open his eyes to that. Um, and we have some R Bourbon Barrel updates as well. We've got some new fun stuff coming. So, uh, John, why don't you go ahead and get us started for the evening, and then uh, we'll get moving on. All right. So first off here, I've got the uh, – I want to double-check the lineup here, actually, for the rum. Was there a specific yeah. order we're going to go through these in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're going to start five. with tri Triple X5. Okay. Green five, and then six, and then the dock. Yes, yes. Okay. I think I think that makes the most sense. We are lined up correctly on whiskey cam slash funky rum cam. And I think from this point forward here, I finished off. I had a little warm up pour of a uh, Buffalo Trace store pick. I got that all gone here, so I guess it's about time to get a little bit weird with it. Uh, my experience with rum so far is having some of the four square stuff and a stolen something i don't remember what it was the high proof or whatever they call it oh the overproof in the overproof. small model yep i've had that yeah. which to me was super weird i was given the sample blind and not told what it was okay and i was just told to give my notes on it which i did and it got a little bit weird but it got a little bit fun and i yeah. think my final note was i couldn't tell you what in the fuck this is but i don't <laughs> entirely dislike it good good that so, uh that's an excellent lead into that. Those, um, that is a six-year Hampton um, higher proof rum. It's it's not the funkiest mark, but it's definitely on the funky side. So. Okay, so I, I've walked up to the precipice of funky. I've just cool. yet to jump all the way in. Well, yeah, we're gonna kick you right off there, which I think will be real interesting. All right, so uh, real quick, while I start getting into these, I just want to reach out to everybody in the chat and see what they got going on. Let us know what you're drinking too, because uh, if these things are incredibly too weird for me i'm going to be like daydreaming about drinking other stuff so <laughs> yeah we let a couple people know uh a couple people that are in the group that help pick some of these i think will be showing up as well which will be really fun it's always fun too because like uh funk is a lot like peat and scotch and then either people really like it or they don't like it or they like it on some days or maybe not so much other days but it should be fun. For those of you um, who are primarily bourbon drinkers and haven't had rum um, kind of like this before. So, there, I mean, obviously rum is rum. It's distilled from molasses or sugar cane or a byproduct thereof. Um, this funky stuff usually comes from Jamaica. And there's a couple other places that have um, other rums. But um, the stuff that we're having tonight, the funky stuff will be coming from Jamaica and Mauritius. But the... Jamaican rum is interesting in that they let it ferment outside in a pit um, in the open air. So it's all wild yeast. So that'll kind of set the stage for what uh, for what John is trying here. I'm ready to get wild, uh, man. Yeah, are you? Yeah. What do you, uh, you've got the five, right? I've got the five going. Are you going to sip through these with me and kind of uh, explain the pick to the yeah. audience here? Hell yeah. Um, it's Actually, been a while. It smells great. Oh, good. Good. This is, uh, yeah, so triple X five. Let's see. I got some of it a little bit here. Um, this is on the younger side. So this is a two-year worthy park. So it's not unaged. Obviously, it's spent two years in barrels, tropically aged. Let's see if this doesn't blow out. You can see. Nah, it's not great. Um, this is a golden-ish color. Yeah, yeah. It picks up a good good deal of barrel. That's, that's coming from the tropics. Um, this was picked, if you guys aren't familiar, um, the aficionados in our rum. So the rum subreddit, if you like Reddit, go to our rum. Um, we bought, this is the fifth entry. We've done one, two, three, four, five, and six, as well as Doc, which we'll try tonight. Um, those are all barrel proof, cast strength, no coloring, no filtering, no additives, no dosage um, from different uh, designations. So we've done a, wow, we've done the Dominican, 
We've done Venezuela. We've done Foursquare and Barbados. I noticed a lot of you guys are drinking um, Foursquare, which is super cool. Um, we've done a, let's see, a Worthy Park, a Mauritius, and a Fiji. The Fiji is wild. We're not tasting that tonight, but maybe some other time. And then the Doc is from Jamaica as well. But yeah, so. What are these, uh, what's the barrel that these are going to spend their time in? Is it an ex bourbon barrel or? Yeah, these are these are going to be predominantly bourbon barrel. Um, some rums, some of you may have run into Plantation, who is very um, notorious for taking rums and finishing them in a cognac cask. Um, but these are going to be primarily bourbon barrels. So some of them will be entirely tropically aged. Some will be aged partially in the tropics, partially in Europe. Um, but these were all bottled in Denmark at Fine Drams. Shout out to Yanas and Fine Drams who rock. Um, because they, they're the ones that kind of let us do this. Oh, yeah. It's been a, it's probably been, I don't know, a month or two since I've had these. So it'll be kind of a, a re adventure for myself as well. It's a good kind of adventure to have, I guess. Yeah. All right. We're going in. Yeah. Hmm. Man. That's good. <laughs> so it's going to be a little strong, 65% ABV, but nothing, nothing super insane. Man. That's not bourbon. No, it's not whiskey. <laughs> you know, it's not entirely in a different realm, though. No, I. this is why we're starting with this, guys. So this is two years. Um, it's sort of funky. This is 67.7 uh, grams, hectoliter, uh, whatever the ester marking is, H-G-L-A-A. Um, so this is 67 on the scale. I, I want to say that... Uh, Four square is going to fall about 30, 18 to 30, perhaps. This isn't scaring me off with like any of the weird Esther or anything like crazy going on with it. Um, okay. It's just, it's kind of, it's more simple than I thought it would be. Or I don't want to say simple, I guess, because as soon as I took a sip, I got like five new flavors out of it. But it's, yeah, um, yeah. it's very straightforward for me. I think it's a big not- part of that is just not knowing what I'm looking for in it either. Yeah, it's going to be totally new, which is kind of the fun, like, um, especially too, because like it kind of looks like whiskey. I mean, it, it's golden and maybe more like a space side scotchy, yeah, on the younger side, but yeah, like a three year Irish or something, maybe something yeah. totally barley. Man, it's a huge hit of vanilla. Something fruity happened right when I drank it too. Mm hmm. But then, like, so that first sip, I got a ton of fruit and barrel character all at the same time, and I couldn't split the two very well. Like liquid, juicy fruit. Yeah, I could see that, Hokey, for sure. Yeah, it starts to get you that, like, uh, to me, it really comes through, like, that mango, guava, peach. Not not so much banana, but, like, like you know, bourbon, You when you get barrel, you get oak and vanilla, and this, you get more, like, vanilla and like a whole world of like weird fruits that don't come across yeah. as like artificial but no that's a good way to put it is weird fruit like i don't know if i could put my finger on exactly i, I don't think i could tell you one fruit oh yeah yeah it's it like smells like the tropics to me like when i yeah. go to hawaii or florida and i get a tropical mixed drink i'm like it smells like vacation like like this is quintessentially yep. like vacation in a glass yeah absolutely You know, for something that's, you know, moderately high ABV too, it's not like rip your face off heat, but it, it was like total mental fucking reboot on the first sip though. Cause I was like, okay, I smell a ton of vanilla here. Maybe like a little bit of brown sugar in it. Yeah. Took a sip and I was just like, hmm, this doesn't taste like what I thought it was going to taste like. It's funny too, because yeah, so I'll drink this and I'll drink it neat. Um, and I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, there's some proof to it. 
but then I drink something like a Booker's, which is what, three times the age, three and a half times the age and the same ABV. And I'm like, oh my God, this is hot. Like, it's insane how well behaved like a two year rum can be. You know, also bourbon barrel. I think some of that may be yeah. in the tropics, but. Yep. Yeah, these yeah, are these. Are this dangerous. is good. Especially when you start making cocktails. Oh, I should probably switch the banner here to the correct one. Yeah. I like that. I'm going to leave that a little bit in the glass so I can come back to it and nose and taste compared to the other ones. I like sure. the way that goes down, though. I mean, the mouthfeel on it's like it's a combination of thin and it's just like a little bit dry. You know, it kind of reminds me of a dry white wine almost as you take sure. a sip. But it's pretty impressive stuff, actually. I thought it's I was going to take a couple sips meat. and be like, that's nice, Jay. Thanks for sending it to me. It's very nice of you. Let's let's move over. I got some old tub here. <laughs> but honestly, man, it's uh, it's pretty good and pretty interesting, really. I, I kind of dig that stuff. Awesome. It's funny, too, because like there's so many rums that are just so sugary and thick and syrupy and fake, um, which some people like, and, and there's no shame in that. But, you know, for an unadulterated rum that's young, like, to me, it's crazy that they can be this good, you know, without any dosing and have that much flavor and stuff. Let's see. I got the six here. Yeah, you got the right. six next, right? Moving on to the six. So here we've got the triple X six rum. Looks like a nine year. Is that correct with your scribbling? Yeah. And a 67.2% yes. ABV. Yeah, this baby's kind of a ripper. And there's there's a fun story behind this. Um, this is triple X6, which is technically an agricole. Agricole is a style of rum made from cane juice instead of molasses. Um, Mauritius is the country of origin. So this is kind of between the two, 65% on the triple X5. Uh, this is 67. Doc, I had to send him the 69%. <laughs> nice. Um because 85.76 nice. is just illegal to send through the mail, no matter yeah. what your opinion is. It's illegal to drink. Uh, you're not allowed to look at it in public, and you, you definitely cannot point at it. Yeah, in fact, this is this is the first time that this bottle has been out of a gallon Ziploc bag, because that's what I keep it in to keep like the aroma. Yeah, um, like vacuum seal it and dig a hole out back and hide it in there. Yeah, it sits in its own cupboard. Otherwise, everything that goes near it, smells like doc but the triple x6 is it should be interesting because it, yeah it's a nine-year agricole and agricole has a very different flavor profile which is why i kind of sandwiched it in the middle of the jamaicans so jordan the uh i did a little warm-up on the buffalo trace just before we went live and uh, i'm probably going to get into the old tub after uh these next couple of funky rums scar me deeply man this is like this is super interesting. It's like a ton of buttercream frosting almost. Yeah, yeah. This is, uh, smells much heavier. We'll see, too. Agricole has a really pronounced profile on the palate. Um, and I won't tell you what it is, but I, I think it might, uh, it might interest you. Uh, I was going to say, is it goat piss? But as soon as you said it might interest me, then I got you ready to drink that, huh? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's wow. been a lot for this one too. That's weird. So a fun story behind this too. So the panel, uh, we we had like fourteen people and we tried like fifteen rums. Um, and everyone initially was like not feeling it, and they left their samples for like a month just to sit. And a month later, we all tried them again, and everyone was like, "Oh my god! Like I need to buy this." And thankfully, you and us was forward thinking and bought many liters of this. I know we bought a thousand liters of triple X five, so there's definitely some more of that sitting around. Um, I don't remember how many liters of this was bought, but this was a must buy after sitting for a while. Man, it is foolish how much it changes on the pellet. Yeah, right. The nose is just totally deceptive. Yeah. It's got a big mouthfeel too. Yeah. It's got a hell of a presence. I can't 
fucking figure out what it is. And that's the fun, that. right? Like, this is a whole new world. You, you'll never oh, yeah. find this like this in bourbon. I, I don't know if I've ever had anything even parallel to this. Have you ever, I'm trying to think of where, have you ever chewed on like raw sugar cane before? Have you ever had that opportunity? No, we don't have a lot of that here. Okay, someday, it's weird. My grocery store actually has stocks of sugar cane. I'll send some to you. No kidding. Um, it, it's the weirdest thing. It's between like the coconuts and like the chili peppers. Man, the legs on this are foolish too. Yeah, this is. I hope I go. Mm. So yeah, what do you think? How, how do you like this compared? This is totally different than the five. Well, I can tell that this is a lot more age on it, which I mean, just looking at the color alone, I don't know as I could. It's pale. But yeah. I mean, I guess being that it's in a used barrel, it's not going to pick up a ton of color out of it. But yeah, this one has there's a lot more going on in the nose in this one. The other one I, I thought was uh, pretty straightforward. You know, a lot of sweet vanilla. This one, I get like a ton of buttercream frosting right up front. But there's like a little bit of spice and stuff going on in the background, too. Yeah, these agricoles come to me as super grassy. Yeah, grassy is a good way. To, like, that's how I would think about the palate. As soon as you said, like, to have bitten sugarcane, I was like, I get this, like, green something. I wouldn't have associated it with that having never had it. But yeah. there's a, a green something in there for it. Man, it's crazy how it could be sweet and bitter and spicy all at the same time. Like, even, like, a little bit of, like, big red chewing gum in there almost yeah. it's just man yeah that's cinnamon note for sure and and yeah. it's weird too because like some bourbons have cinnamon and like that doesn't even no it's a enter totally different thing man this is silly <laughs> yeah man this was i think this this might be this might be the craziest rum. I know we did crazy stuff at the dock, and we'll get there eventually. But like, agric like agricole, like Tra Rivera, like, and some of those other brands are just completely different. No, Jordan, no, no, Doctor Bird tonight that I can. Uh, I think that he and I have both had it, so I wanted to stick to stuff that was going to be totally new. You've yeah, had that bird, right? I have that Doctor Bird that Jordan took like one smell up sent to me. And I, I didn't think it was anywhere near as terrible as he made it sound. It was definitely an eye-opening experience, eye-closing experience. I don't know. It was it was an experience, I guess. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Yeah, Dr. Bird is interesting. It's a lot like that stolen overproof. It's a six-year Jamaican, but it goes into wine barrels. So that, I think that yeah, it's, it's almost too sweet for some people because funk comes across as really sweet. So what do you think? Thumbs up, thumbs down on the six? Um, it's not definitely sure. not a thumbs down for me. Uh, it, it, it it's like, uh, an eight thirty thumb. Okay. I, I, don't, I can't go all the way up with it because I just, I can't wrap my mind around it yet. Yeah, sure. Sure. I dig the mouthfeel a lot. Uh, I think the nose on it is really good, but there's a couple notes in there that I don't have anything good to associate it with. Yeah. That's and that, it makes it a little bit, it puts me off balance. It's definitely a little more enigmatic. Like it takes a while to like sit and really. Um, it's definitely not straightforward. Yeah. Cool, man. This one's fun to come back to in like a while. It really opens up well. Hmm. What do you say? Should we move on? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> cool. Um. This is Doc. This this label will show up on the webcam because it's black. Yeah. Um, so this is Doc, uh, not this is clear. barrel aged, huh? <laughs> this did not see a barrel at all. This actually arrived in a massive, food-safe, flammable-proof plastic PET food chip container um, covered in things like do not inhale and no open flame warnings. Um, and the reason for that is because it arrives at 85.76% ABV right off the
Jay, I'm going to be honest with you. This smells like diesel fuel. Yeah, looks like he's frozen up here. I'm going to just start digging into this a little bit until he comes back to life. Um, it's it's not really actually bad on the nose. It's definitely something stronger there than I could have guessed. Oh, looks like Jay's back in. Sorry about um, that. My, uh, my network reset briefly. Man, I'm still trying to figure this out. I'm trying to talk about it as I'm going through it. And I don't know what I'm going to do a worse job of trying to discern what the hell I'm smelling here or to speak on it. Oh, yeah. I opened the dock and my webcam was just like, nope. Yeah, exactly. Can you um, tell me a little bit about this? What is this distilled from sugarcane? Nope. This is um, distilled from molasses. Okay. Um, the fun part. Um, so it's called dock. Dock is actually the mark of the rum. Um, every distillery has different marks, and that's how they classify um, how they distilled it, their blending, whether it's column pot, um, stuff like that. Um, Dock is produced at the Hampton Estate in Jamaica. Um, it is wildly fermented in a pit with dunder. Uh, dunder is the rum equivalent of sour mashing. You leave some muddy, nasty remains from the previous fermentation in a pit. Um, you pour your new fermentation in, and you just kind of see what yeast comes in from the jungle. And and then you distill that. So doc, though, means the ester count. So we talked previously, the triple X5 had about 67 ester count. Um, four square has about 18 to 30. Doc, however, um, you'll notice the 1489 on the front label. Um, this comes in at 1488.8 ester count. Um, this is potentially the most potent rum um, that is coming. And in fact, we are only the second group. We were the first to buy it, the second to bottle it, to actually bottle something like this because it is not typically consumed by human beings. It's used to flavor things. It's used to make perfume stinky. It's used in food products. <laughs> um, we I diluted this down to about 68% was my math. I was trying to hit 69. There's bottlings at 69. I have a bottling at 85.76. Nice. But this is um, this is about as raw a flavor as you can get. It's completely unaged. And it is uh, it is the, the thesis of funk. Oh, man, yeah. And if you put your nose too close to it. Yeah, know. it'll back you up. Woo! Man. So yeah, what do you what do you think? What do you what do you what are you smelling? Man, there's something strange in there, and uh, obviously there's plenty of proof to it. You get a lot of that ethanol. I, I still pick up a bunch of that sweet vanilla too, which I might just yeah. be associating with uh, the molasses distillation. I'm not sure. When rum is just, it's sweet. It you know it won't right. come across as sweet on the palate, but. It's typically pretty sweet and delectable on the nose. Dead things. Yep. Rotting. So this also comes from hogo is a phrase to describe funk. Hogo is a French term that describes rotting meat and fruit, but in a way that is enticing. This so, is like okay. <laughs> if you were to... Uh, if you were to mix nail polish remover i'll let you get that sip in before i say this i don't want you shooting that out of your eyes mm. if you were to mix a little bit of nail polish remover into grain alcohol and then mix it with some sweet vanilla alcohol is sort of what it reminds me of. oh yeah it's That's like this good. dry chemical backing to it yeah it's, it's not unpleasant though I mean, I'm not doing a great job of making it sound enticing, but it's really not unpleasant. Well, and that's a funny thing. Like, this is selling crazy fast. And we're like, hopefully people want this. Because we knew the diehard rum people would want it. But the only way to describe it is like, like, oh, man, like a banana that's on fire, that's rotting, mm. like some leather. And like, um, like, woo. Yeah. I mean, it's A hot. banana that's on fire is a really good start. Yeah, and like a complete opposite way of like, because that's also how I describe like Jack Daniels barrel proof, but like that's like a brownie sundae with caramel. And this is just straight like, this is like wearing one of those funny fruit hats, but like the fruit hat's on fire and you're also on fire. Yeah. 
like the front part of your head, also known as your face, would be the part that's on fire if I had to choose <laughs> an anatomical designation there. Yeah, certainly. The uh man. It's pungent too. And like the worst if, if yeah. you leave this little bit out and you come back a couple hours later, the room that you are in um will smell like doc. And in fact, tomorrow when you wake up, you might um get inklings of doc. We call it the docketing or getting docked. It really sticks in your sinuses. Cool. I was hoping to get docked on tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man. It also goes really great in a cocktail. If you've ever had Ting, uh, Ting and Doc, Ting and Ray and Nephew Overproof is like a classic tiki beverage in the simple kind of way. Um, but Ting and Doc is fantastic. That's a grapefruit soda. Man, there's something familiar there. There's a lot of things that are not super familiar there, which is making <laughs> it a, a little bit difficult to nail it down. Mm. Yeah, I think there are actual... Th there's probably chunks of panther in there. There's really and, nothing to say that wild animals couldn't scurry on in. I oh, just yeah. think there's a lot of flies. Oh, they would have birds. to be. Anything that's like flying within a quarter mile of this probably dies, falls into it, and then yeah. increases its death radius after that. Yeah, and I, I was going to send you the still strength. So I'm, I'm drinking it still strength, so 85. Um, I wanted mm. to send you still strength, but A, I didn't want the package to catch on fire, and I also didn't want to have to put a flammability warning on it. Yeah, I don't know. Is uh, the post would really love delivering that one. No, but man. So yeah, so this is, I mean, very much the same, well, same origin as the triple X five, but dialed up to about eleven, which is just kind of crazy. Man. The thing is I put it next to the six, and then I was like, wow, the six smells a lot like doc. And I kind of have to like put this over here. Yeah, I can't wait to have a a dock barrel finished bourbon in a little bit. <laughs> There's rumors that we might have some dock aging in a couple of different barrels. Did the barrels disintegrate? Uh, we'll find out. I haven't, okay. I haven't been told that they have, but I've been told that it's in barrels. There's so, some weird fruit in there, man. There's something, yeah. some type of tropical, wacky bullshit, I think is the, the note I'm getting specifically. Would be the scientific term? Yeah, I think so. Tropical, wacky bullshit. Uh, dead things, ethanol. You have to admit that, I don't know, the first time I had this, I expected 69% ABV to be so much more ferocious. And I don't know if that was like almost hitting the hazmat mark, but um, even it, it, it to, to me, it doesn't seem like quite as crazy. And I think sometimes barrel finished bourbons or, you know, barrel aged bourbons kind of come out a little hotter than I would expect. But yeah, the funk is in your face, but the ABV certainly is pretty well behaved. Yeah, I mean, for what it is. It's not. I mean, it smells harder than it tastes, almost. And I think part of that is just because of the wacky tropical bullshit. Mm hmm Man. Whew. Yeah, so that is, that is your first run-in with Doc. Um, and you can see why this goes into things like perfumes, food products, gums, candies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Those are the big I could ones. absolutely see this being used to flavor gum or something like that. Yeah. And in fact, too, it kind of, this is a little bit different. I don't know if you know the story behind Juicy Fruit, but that actually is produced um, from isoamyl acetate, which is a byproduct of distillation that comes and smells very much like Juicy Fruit because that's where Juicy Fruit came from. But that banana, pineapple, apple, coconut, super tropical kind of bonanza, pina colada, but like doc is just so vibrant and like the papaya mango just like jumps out in yeah a, there's in, a, in like a chemical way yeah yeah like if you soaked some papaya dried papaya in napalm <laughs> and you didn't light it on fire you just let it fester i mean you did yeah you just let it hang out um let that mingle for 
or I don't know, I'm ballparking here, four or five years in the sun. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, drag it down a highway, like a pallet of it. Crashing into a fresh tropical fruit stand. Okay. Where the lady at the stand was doing her nails. And you mix all of that together. That that acetone varnish note, that's a good pickup. Yeah. I think that's that's what's going on. And, And I'm pretty sure that the person at the fruit stand is they're in the mix too. There's people in this. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, there's definitely folks in there. Oh, man. Yeah, this is this is some crazy hot shit, man. Yeah, so now, now you've tasted what is essentially the most extreme rum that exists right now. In fact, we, we really weren't sure that um, that they would let us buy it. We didn't know that this was like sitting around. Um, and we were pretty surprised when we asked, like, can we buy this? And 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 find your arms is like, well, let me find out. And he's like, yes, yes, we can buy it. Should we buy it? And we're like, um, I guess we should Yeah, we'll give it a go. Um, yeah, a good question by Eric bourbon for the masses. So the originally this came at 85.76. We were concerned that if we watered it down, um, that it would take the edge off and, and, and all of us tasted it, but we also tasted it diluted. Um, and it's, it's, it's our belief that it actually opens up really well. It opens up that fruit bouquet really nicely. Um, I'm having it still strength just because it's been a while for me, but I greatly prefer this at the 60, 68, 69% because it, it opens up so much at, at 85 plus percent. It's really closed off. You have to work really hard and really let it sit on your tongue to open up, which um, it is a testament that maybe, maybe if you can buy something at 86% ABV, maybe you should not, maybe you should water it down a tiny bit. You know, we're not talking about pushing this down to 40.1% ABV, but, uh, 69 is definitely the sweet spot as it is nice. for all things in life. Yeah. It was so hard to just keep a straight <laughs> face all the time. So like, so 69, right. To make it legal. Like, yeah, 69, always the answer. Always. But man, yeah, I'll, I'll put a drop or two in this, but. I mean, the 85 is is really strong. It's really pungent, but something about just giving it a little boost to open up is, um, it's game changing. Oh it's yeah, it's certainly unlike anything I've had. That's good. That's good. Yeah, and that's the fun part it's of cool. rum too. I don't not like it, and I kind of thought that with uh, all of the doc talk. That this could get so fucking strange that I'd be like, yeah, it'd be cool, Jay, if you could uh, just not send me any more of that, please. But really, I mean, this is pretty cool stuff. Good. Well, I'm good. You like it? Yeah, it's not like that, like sheep dung smoke bourbon. Like it, right. Like it sounds gross, but you're not like, I'm pretty certain that this will be gross. Or maybe you are, but hopefully you don't feel that way. I think that. It's just, I was it's nervous that it would be gross. But really, I mean, when I started pouring these and I got all of that big, sweet sugarcane, vanilla type of stuff coming out of it, I was like, oh, okay. I mean, this will be, it'll be weird, but it'll be something I can get into. Yeah. Then the fun part, too, is to go back to that six. Oh. Yeah, and the dock just hangs for so long. It's so rich. Yeah, there's something in there, man. You spend some time with that. <laughs> Me and the doc, we're going to uh, get an apartment across town, hang out. Give it the motel, the hotel, the, the Holiday Inn. Yeah, exactly. Oh, man. All right. Let's go back into the six here. Now, nothing to, I mean, there was definitely like some, you know, banana on fire going on there but uh no like real like foot or horrific odors in there it's not like lactic or sweaty or like right really medicinal or or you know it's not like lefroy which is should be gross but is kind of enticing Mm. i'd actually i would probably give people something like doc before i would give them something like lefroy yeah i could see that 
And maybe that's just because fruit is like typically more enticing than like, I don't know, bandages and iodine. And... Right. Yeah. It smells like a used band aid, but not like from a normal person, like from somebody who lives under a bridge. And you're going to pay a lot to experience this. Like, right. It's hard to like yeah. get, get people. The barrier of entry that. is high. Man, coming and back the to fun the part six. too, like rum is, I mean, I won't say it's inexpensive and I won't say that it's the cheapest thing, but these are really well priced for what you get. The most expensive one, the Fiji is just a little bit over a hundred bucks for cast strength, non-adulterated rum, which is super rare rum. Like, like the docks are, are well under a hundred dollars. The, the triple X five, that first one you had is I think only like 38 bucks USD right now because of exchange. Like. Coming back to the six is crazy now. Yeah, it's totally it's like totally different once you get that funk up in your sinus. Yeah. Yeah, it's like uh like bananas foster, brown sugar type of deal going on. Mm-hmm. A little bit nutty, definitely still weird, but and I get like a weird like Angostura like bitters note on the back of my throat. And then there's the weird. <laughs> yeah, and then it storms in. Yeah, I couldn't tell you what that weird is, though. That's fine. It takes time. None of these are like any bourbon you'll have ever had. So, it, True. I, I would not expect you to, to be like, oh, yeah. Man. Of the three, what was my favorite? Would I want a full bottle of any man i could tell you if i could put these things on a board and carve them up and take pieces out of each one and turn it into one bottle i could probably have something that i was really into i'm not sure which one i would say i like i haven't spent enough time with them to really go that far and maybe at first blush just the uh triple x5 is good because it's the most uh i don't know well behaved out of them all it's like the the least wild yeah m maybe a little more familiar yeah yeah it definitely has a lot of familiar notes though that's true um i like the mouthfeel of the six a lot it drinks really nice good flavor wise between the dock and the six i, I might go with the dock oh wow I, I think I'm with you. I really like the six, but one, once you have that dock, it's it's kind of hard to forget about. Yeah. The six, there's just been something in there on the palette that I, I just cannot fucking figure out. <laughs> and it's really tough to decide if it's something that I like or something that I don't like. Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, it's not like a visceral thing like, ah, holy shit, that tastes like, you know, the inside of a dead possum. Yeah. But... Yeah. It's just like I take a sip. I'm like, man, what is that? That's weird and different. And I'm I'm not like I'm not running away from it. That's but good. I'm not I have like, expected you to like 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 oh my god, like shield your face. Um, which is good. It's weird. All right, go back to the five. <laughs> yeah, I, I just went back to the five as well. It's fun to revisit these. It's been a while for me. Man, rum is so good. I'm glad it's like becoming, it's definitely becoming very um, visible. I wouldn't say it's super popular yet, but it's very visible to, to yeah. consumers. Well, it's also one of those things where people who get tired of chasing bourbon or get tired of not being able to find the bourbon they want are finding that rum if you're in the right area, it could be a lot more available. Like you said, oh, the, yeah. uh, the dollar goes pretty far with it. Yeah. I mean, there, there's, there's a whole host of super premium rums, but it, it is, it's nothing like bourbon, especially now, you know, and people who've been into bourbon for a while, you know, have, have a lot of case of like, Oh, I remember when this product I'm paying $80 for now was $30 then or 40 or 45 or 50, uh, your 50 bucks in Rumland is going crazy far. Um, and like, I think one of the best bottles of rum you can buy, J Ray and FU Overproof, 
is a Jamaican 62, 63% overproof rum and it's $19. It's insane. Um, that's a great question, Jordan. So yes, things like doc will stay with you for a while. Um, I've had a couple of other spirits this last week that had a similar effect, which is why you might've noticed that I haven't posted quite as many reviews. Um, Doc will stick with Free, you. I yeah. especially notice that like in my sinuses, like it, it sounds like a joke, but like um, if I drink a lot of Doc or even a little bit of Doc or or if we're doing crazy high ester stuff from a couple of different marks, um, I definitely wake up the next day and I'm like, <sniffs> like, yep, there's still some Doc in there. So I, I usually take days off tasting because it, it's just so, so funky. And even in a way that peated, like peated, if I have something peated, like, that's the end of the night. Like that's all I can do, but I usually don't taste it the next day. Um, which is, I think where doc might be weird. It's like doc really sticks with you, which we'll see. We'll pull John at like 8 AM tomorrow and be like, so like, <laughs> tell me, tell me what you smell. And does it smell like doc? Because I bet Cheerios and doc is, is, is an interesting combination. Yikes. Going for the tub? Yeah, we're going to get into the tub. <clears throat> nice. Yep. Take a dip in the tub after uh, all that doc. Oh, nice. It's funny that we talked about dead things because I just watched a fruit fly fly right right into the dock glass. I don't know if you could see it. But it just did he really fly in or did he fly near it and the dock killed him stone dead in the air? Uh, yeah, I think the final 10% was... Uh, it might have been... A, a steep decline in altitude, but yeah, fuck, it's in there now. Shit, that's far from the only fly in there, and I do not think you'll notice it. You're gonna burn your fucking this is finger the, off. The first fly post distillation that you know of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, that, that's fair. <laughs> oh, I got him. Gear oil. Yeah, got him. It's Sorry. yeah. It probably drinks just a little better than hydraulic oil. At least it won't kill you. Right. If you drink enough of it, it will, but your your True. default state won't be won't be dead afterwards. Correct. I might go. It's funny you're talking Buffalo Trace before this because I have a I have a local Buffalo Trace pick that I decided to uh I was like, Oh, I'll warm up with this, and then I forgot to drink it. Yeah, the one that I warmed up on is real nice. I like that a lot. It's good stuff. <clears throat> Yeah, there's like, like a half of a burning banana stuck in my face right now. Yeah, this buffalo trace smells a lot like agricultural and doc. Yeah, this old tub smells. Uh, actually, it smells like nutty beam goodness. To be honest with you, I'm waiting for that to hit here. I'm actually kind of excited about that one. That one in early times, bottled and bond lately. I've been like, I should probably buy one of those. Yeah, the old tub is crazy because at first blush, I was like, eh, it kind of looks and smells like being white label. And I was unsure. I was like, either way, it's like, whatever, 20 bucks. So you can't be mad at it. Okay. But then got into it a little bit, had a couple sips. And I was like, you know what? It's good. It goes far deeper than white label ever could. Okay. It ca carries itself in a whole different way. It's got a good mellow feel. That's good to know. Yeah. Have, you, not ready. have you opened that repeal yet? Yeah, I've actually, I've already killed a bottle of the repeal. I liked it a lot. Oh, okay. Um, cool. I, I just got another one that uh, I get to shoot photos of, do a full proper review on it. Because I was thinking, uh, I was just telling my wife earlier that I she got me that first bottle of repeal batch. And I was like, you know, this is like, really pretty good i kind of went into it with a really low expectation yeah and not that i have anything against beam i mean i really kind of cut my teeth on their products and I, you know they've got a, a spot on the shelf with uh things like knob creek always bookers bakers all those i i think are great but the lower end stuff i just usually skip over because it ends up coming out a little bit light yeah a That's lot right. light and that first one uh, of the repeal batch that I got, I just kind of went through it without realizing it and got down so low that I was like, geez, I don't even want to, I don't want to like shoot photos of this bottle with like 
three ounces left in it. So mm -hmm. finish it off, grabbed another one. Well, I mean, it's been months since I finished the first one. But anyway, I grabbed another one. Uh, I'll crack into that. And I've got it scheduled for a few weeks out. So I've got a little bit of time to drink the top third or so and really investigate cool. it. I was really shocked um, when I was on Bourbon Pursuits Whiskey from Home. And I was like, um, they asked us, like, what limited edition <clears throat> do you think is the biggest sleeper? And I was like, oh, like Beamer Peel Badge for like 14 yeah. bucks. Like, no one will get this. And then John from Dad's Drinking Bourbon was like, so like Beamer Peel Badge. And I was like, what? Like, <laughs> I mean, I, I'm glad to see other people buy it because like my stores are just like littered with it. Nobody's buying it. And I don't get why. I mean, I sort of get why it, it's beam. They release something like this all the time, but it's silly good for what it is, especially yeah. limited. I'm sure the batch was huge, but it's yeah, limited at 30,000 bottles is, you know, the way that they're calling it limited is probably just that they're going to do a batch of it, but it's still a massive batch. Yeah. I mean, everything beat good yeah. though. <sighs> yeah. So speaking of beam, I guess, why don't, why don't we hash out a little, uh, <clears throat> A little our bourbon news and then we can kind of finish up with our, our tastings and kind of hanging out but oh it's time huh uh, yeah i guess we should we should probably catch up on that kind of stuff um i haven't told our bourbon about this yet so if you're hanging out um you guys are the first to know if you've been outside of discord which i think is cool um an update on the russells russells are locked in both barrels are good to go we're going to start working on artwork for a sticker uh rest assured that it will not be ridiculous it'll be informative kind of like diamond in the riff um, I expect those in a couple, probably the drafts for those in a couple of weeks. Um, Smooth Ambler, we're going to do two barrels of Smooth Ambler, Old Scout, five-year MGP at Barrel Proof. Um, about 50 bucks. We'll do two barrels for that. Those samples are ordered. They should be in in a couple of weeks. Um, I have two barrels that are top secret. I won't talk about those right now. Um, but one barrel that has been added that I can talk about is we will be doing a Knob Creek single barrel reserve, which is huge for me personally. Um, I've wanted to pick one of these things for a long time. We'll pick one this year. We'll probably pick a whole bunch more, maybe November, December, uh, early 2021. But yeah, so that that's officially barrel number five for our bourbon, along with uh, two barrels I can't quite talk about in a new riff this fall. So that should be pretty exciting. I, I, I'm pretty jacked, especially since we did those Knob Creeks. Was It was last week too, I think. Yeah, the Sorry. rise. Weeks are, the rise were really good. I, I'm going to try and get a a rye single barrel i think next year but we'll start with a bourbon because i those are just a darling for for me personally oh yeah those are hot right now too especially with knob creek doing their limited edition 12 year and 15 year i i think the price point on those being that they're high is or i should say higher than the other stuff i mean relatively speaking they're fine but when you yeah. look at a, a knob creek slow pick that comes in at 50 bucks and then you get an age dated 100 proof 12 or 15 for 60 to 120 it's pretty easy to say you know give me the slow pick so hopefully uh we can get something half decent out of those i'm really excited about you know a picking them but also just getting into the fact of hey holy shit we're gonna have some really nice knob creek coming in and yeah if i look at my bunker now i think i've got in the neighborhood of a baker's dozen store picks that are all open and all fucking awesome yeah, I mean, I, I'm super psyched. And the retailer I'm partnering with for the Knob Creek, um, he has excellent rapport with Beam, which is great. Um, we were talking about some other barrels that they have done. Um, I won't tell you who it is quite yet. I'm not quite there. But, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't have taken this if I didn't think it was an awesome opportunity. And finally, this is I think this is going to be fantastic. Uh, two years ago, I did the Knob Creek Rodeo, which was 45 single barrels. And there was so few just That was so there. fun. <laughs> I like... I couldn't drink Knob Creek for a while afterwards. I was like, you know, that's a yeah. lot. Um, but there was, there was, I mean, there was one or two I didn't really like that much. But unlike some other series I've done, that there, there were no misses in the bunch, and they've only gotten better. And I, I'm stoked to take uh, one knob this year and probably a couple next year. So wow, phrasing, dude. <laughs> um, yeah, the, that's the thing with knob too. Like, oh yeah. I mean, I just see that Archer GIF like mm -hmm. the moment I start talking about it racing boom yeah consistently but it should be pretty fun that's that's kind of the, the announcement for tonight um on reddit tomorrow i will post about it in my weekly kind of roundup i've been trying to keep everyone in the loop is 
much as possible. It's kind of hard because I've been super busy lately. But um, yeah, Knob Creek, Two Smooth Ambler, Two Russell's Reserve. We got two secret barrels. We got a new riff. I think 2020 is going to be a pretty screaming year, at least for our bourbon. Yeah. I mean, as far as drinking liquor goes, we're kicking the shit out of it. Yeah, yeah. And that's not even talking about like things like rum and brandy and other spirits. Oh, man, I can't wait until we start getting not, not so much into the fall because when we start talking fall, I'm going to be like driving hard for rye for me. Oh, that's yeah. like that nice, uh, you know, spicy profile that kind of hits all of the cool weather that comes through. We get the you know, like crazy scenery getting the hunting season. For me, it's like, OK, let's bust out the spicy rye and, you know, as many whistle pigs as possible. Oh, yeah. And then we yeah, start effect. moving into the actual cold weather where it's a uh, holiday time. It's going to be all brandy, man. Yeah, that, that's a good point too. And, and it made me think of it too, because the whistle pig guy hopped into our bourbon earlier in the day. But yeah, once that first like cold snap or like the, the air gets a little bit cool and I, I want things like, like a Marzen or Oktoberfest beer and, and rye and, and I, I probably start to drink a little more scotch, but yeah, once that November snap comes, it's all about the brandy. Yeah. Well, Okay, I, I'm not quite there in November yet, but I'm like, it's in my mind. In yeah, November, yeah. I'm like, I'm like thinking, shit, it's almost brandy time. And then sometimes, too, late, like, yeah, some sometimes years it comes early. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Like some, like it's just like one day you wake up and you're like, like ah, yes, like yeah, switch, it like, smells like Armagnac. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. What do you got there? Is that that uh, Buffalo Trace? Yeah, this is really nice. It's been a really long time since I've had Buffalo Trace. This was picked, I want to say, yeah, this was picked by Riley's Wines of the World here in Madison. Um, pretty cool little shop. They have it upstairs and downstairs. They got uh, they got hit a little bit lately with the civil unrest, but they're doing okay. Um, they're a pretty cool shop. I, I like them a lot. At least they're Buffalo Trace and they they mark their their picks the same price as, as their normal stuff. So I think that was about 20, 22, 23 bucks. But oh right, being really in a non control state that could get a yeah. little bit spicy. Well, and it's on the way to like where I do all my grocery shopping. So I just you know kind yeah, of you're not going to skip it. Yeah, it's really fruity, which I don't typically get from Buffalo Trace, but there's mm. like so much like raspberry plum. Lots of vanilla. Do you know the uh, barrel stats on it? Do they have the age or anything? No, I, I, would, I would assume that this is between seven and eight, knowing them. That's typically, yeah. if, if they can't get between seven and eight, they'll usually leave it. Um, I can't see it being younger. It's, is uh, seven and a half. Seven and, and a half. And that is, for me, came through as really fruity too. Okay. Um, not red fruits, but I mean, still just had that real bright punch. With like that that background apple note that sometimes comes through nicely in a each Taylor or a Blanton's or something like that. So it was pretty cool to see that jump out. It was a seven and a half year barrel that is twenty six ninety nine. So it's pretty oh, tough nice. to cry, cry about that. At all. <laughs> I'm I'm getting getting hints that I should try some dock in the Buffalo Trace. A docolo trace. Ooh, that that's a good alliteration. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know how I feel about that. I would almost <laughs> think that the wacky banana bullshit out of the triple X six in there. Six but I mean, I'm talking like just a couple drops. It's gonna get fucking weird either way. I don't see yeah. you doing that and having it not be fucking weird. Yeah. Right. Could well, be like that's... good weird though. Yeah, we'll give it a go. Okay. Sprinkle a little dock in it. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So yeah, we'll Sprinkle. try that. I got the glasses for it. We'll we'll try and get like really scientific. So I have probably probably twenty five milliliters of buffalo trays. We'll dock it right in the face. Get your face docked real quick, you disgusting hairy buffalo. Wow, that that really escalated too. 
I don't. Okay, so no, we're doing this really that much different. But, All right, whew. let's get okay. weird. It's happening. Yeah, you got Buffalo on hand too, right? Yeah, I'm here to get weird. All right, let's. Uh, so we got Buffalo and Doc. Got a handful of Buffalo. I'm gonna put a Doc on it. And see, this is this is why I'm glad we do random shit like this because I would never sit at home and be like, perhaps this Buffalo Trace would be better with some Doc in it. But here we are. Here on a we one are. Day. Getting weird. Uh, actually, wait. I already have some six. Sorry. <laughs> I thought you were saying, actually, wait, I'm already weird. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that is also true. But there we go. We, need, we can't do six and six. We'll do whiskey doc. slash funky rum cam. Yeah, the whiskey cam. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. All right. Yeah, I don't believe this has an age. Oh, no. It does. Sorry. All right. Distilled March 14th, 2011. Um, and I know that I bought this late last year in 2019. So this is over eight years old. Ooh, eight look at you go. It's amazing what happens when you read these things. You naughty motherfucker. Well, that's strange. Yeah, it's this weird. uh, this got this got weird. What do you no. start with the six or the doc? I docked it. We're we're making that phrase stick. I think that that's important to uh. Okay. Man, uh, <laughs> I'm I couldn't in all honesty tell you if there's any whiskey in this like if this were a boxing match it, the, the doc would be winning pretty pretty decided this is what i picture you've seen the movie captain america right no i don't watch a whole lot of uh superhero shit okay well i'll it's just because i'm boring you, not because i give a damn i'll give you like the 90 second film guy synopsis there's a tiny guy called steve rogers i believe and he wants to fight for his country but he's tiny and everyone beats the shit out of him that would be the buffalo trace here okay um the world Fuck is doc me. everyone that's taller than he is they kick his teeth in repeatedly um that would be the doc in this scenario okay uh, eventually steve goes on to be infused with a bunch of mumbo jumbo vitamins and becomes a superhero um, but until then he just spends the first 20 minutes of the movie getting his teeth kicked in um, like the Buffalo Trace. Okay. Which is where we are now because my Buffalo Trace now smells and tastes like Doc. Right, right. I feel like it, instead of the Doc lightly sprinkling into the Buffalo Trace and adding character, what we did was added a minuscule amount of caramel to Doc. Yeah. And the tiniest bit of oak on the finish. Okay, let me get there. In a nice way. In a nice way. The nose is all dark. Okay. Well, man. The palate's it, kind of all dark, too. It's pretty docky. However, if the dark tasted like this, on its own. I would have been like, oh, no problem. That's my favorite one. That's good. That's good to know. This is, we. I'll be interested to see what some doc coming out of barrels is like. Yeah. If it's anywhere near this, I'd be really excited about it. We should, instead of fucking Q&A up there, I should have had this be like special announcement. We're fucking, we're docking shit. I like, bet I bet dock in a mini barrel would be fun. Put it in a mini like, barrel for like seventy two hours. Yeah, I can oak bottle it. I've got a oh. Now there's an idea. How much dock do I have left here? Um, we we can. I got a half ounce. You running out of dock? I think that yeah. would evaporate in like twenty minutes in an oak bottle. Yeah, if it didn't have at least half of the oak bottle full, I feel like it would probably be subject to. Something more aggressive than what we could call the angel share. Yeah, I've I have a couple bottles of Doc here. I might I might tinker with that. That's a it almost yeah might make more sense that. if I ship you 
the oak bottles. I mean, it's all pre-seasoned with all the stuff that I just did. I did the coffee beans, the rye, the Manhattan, oh. and then the syrup, and then the Knob Creek. I mean, this thing is like ready to like seriously roll. Okay, well, we'll we'll have to. Uh, yeah, we'll skunk works this. I bet there's some interesting yeah. stuff that we could do. Honestly, how I much, like this. How much more BT would it take to match the dock? How much BT you got, buddy? Like <laughs> more than I feel like a Wednesday night warrants. If I had to wait, where the buffalo's eyes are, and I think it would take from the bottom to like where his eyes are. Yeah, it's actually scientifically known that it, you have to float a buffalo up to his eyes and dock to balance out. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, it's that's it's a good. wild thing too. I would love, I would love to put this in. Uh, I have a Knob Creek single barrel, so much more oak, much more ethanol. But I don't know if then I just come out with something super boozy, and then I wouldn't be able to see afterwards. Yeah, you would definitely go blind, but. It would be temporary, and I think for science, it might be worth it. Yeah, someone would write about this. It might be my obituary, but someone would would put pen to paper. Yeah, uh, I can definitely get you a good epitaph. That's right. Yeah, if you survive me, then. Yep. I mean, assuming right. I don't also get involved with whatever docking you do. You never sure, know. This this could be like one of those, like one of those mass events. Yeah. The bourbon the beginning of a headline trace on the six is interesting too. Get something stuck there. Just another fruit fly. It's no big deal. He's already docked. It's weird. I haven't seen a fly all year, and then the first one I saw just immediately took a just a kamikaze right for the dock. Yep, he knew where his hole was. for the scotch. Yeah, I don't know how many times I've uh, like you hit like an open bar event, and there's like especially here in New England, there's like four different types of whiskey. And one is Jack Daniels and one is Jameson and the other two are terrible. So I say, well, give me the Jameson. <laughs> and then I pick it up and look at it. I'm like, yeah, there's a fly in that. <laughs> Nobody look. This one's going down fast. The worst was I was drinking Brora um, with a buddy a while back. We'd split a sample. And he turned his back, and I watched a fly just like, like, like right into Brewer. We, we paid like a hundred bucks an ounce for the sample, and Ooh. we split it. I mean, it's Brewer. You have to. Um, it was like a hundred bucks an ounce, so we split it half an ounce for each. And the first thing he turns his back, he goes to get a glass of water, and this fly just, just, just breakneck speed, just right for it. And I was like, oh man, like, and like he fished it out. Like it's what I would have done, but I was like. Like if all the drams to have a fly just yeah really you pick the single most expensive thing we probably drank that whole year, I think without without any doubt. Hey, what's up, DJ? How so, you doing, tonight, buddy? I bet he can probably smell the funk from here. I think he's in the Carolinas, which might be in the east radius. Yeah, I would say it's absolutely the entire eastern seaboard is wrecked right now. Yeah, does the air air feel funny? Well, it seems like it used to be humid, but now I can't tell if it is or is not. Yeah, put some dock on it. Yep. This baby cured ailments in the 50s. And then in the 60s, they needed to come up with something else to fix those ailments that came back up. In the 60s, the class action lawsuit was <laughs> yeah. discovered. <laughs> So between the two, I think Buffalo Trace and Doc is significantly better. I think the Triple X Six that has to stand on its own. And I didn't mix I those two because I think I drank all of the six, but yeah, the Doc in the Buffalo Trace was actually surprisingly pretty awesome. We're, we'll have to tinker with this. I think that this is this is a, another live stream project. Okay. For another day. Yeah. I can get on board with that. It was weird, and I like to get weird. Yeah. Man, it's been a while since I had that, but that's super nice. I think, uh, let's see where you are. The six. The six kind of smells like barnyard sometimes, too, which I always think is interesting. I don't know if I cut any of that the barnyard funk out of it, but it was definitely, I think, of the three, the one that hit me in the most 
the greater amount of odd ways. It's really acrid is the word that, that like pumps to my face. Okay. Like the six is really kind of acrid. Not like not like smoky or chemically or gross or tobacco. It's just like there's something there's something super unique to it. And even now drinking a bunch of other agricole, it's there's some note that I even I can't figure out, which is why I haven't reviewed it yet. Because I can't think of the note and it's there. But yeah, there's yeah. something strange in that that I there's absolutely no way that I could spend enough time with it in a one ounce sample to like even come close to describing it to you. But it's there's something unique and strange and it's not bad, but I'm not mm-hmm. convinced that it's good either. Like there's just something fucking weird in that. It is the most off product that I have paid money for and been satisfied by. I can see that. It's weird. It's fun. I think we'll do another one sometime. Yeah, it's weird. All right. Man. So tell me more about the tub. Um, I know it's a limited edition. I know it's affordable. And I know that it's Beam. And it's bottled and bond. It is unfiltered. It's bottled and bond. I did see that. I did not know. Yeah, bottled and bond, unfiltered. Um, honestly, that's about as far as I made it. I haven't done my research on it yet because I need to get another probably two pours before I do my review. Sure, sure. And so when I do that is usually when I take a deep dive into it and read all of their literature about it and see what you know what they are saying about it and how that compares to what's on the label and all that type of stuff. That's and, a good point. It is fun to do those first couple pours, not blind because you know what you have, but like kind right. of blinded to it, the marketing. Yeah, exactly. I don't like to like I don't want to be fed info on what it is until i've had at least a a foothold to sort of stand up and say okay this is what i think is going on this is what i think about it This is what i like and don't like and then i get into the real data and say oh okay this is kind of cool i didn't realize x y and z and now that i know it i'll go back in for my review pour and then i kind of go that way that makes sense that's like uh I brought it up earlier, but I like can't shake it. The bull run that I had that I was fucking in love with, yeah. that wasn't bourbon. And like I didn't know that when I drank it because I was like, ah, eh, this is what I'm drinking tonight. I'll take some notes. And then uh, I looked at it later and was like, wait a second, you're not bourbon at all. Um, yeah, it's crazy. It's fantastic, but you know, it's it's fun to do the research between the the drinking at least the first couple of pours and then the actual presentation. Yeah, I think the bull run stuff is really, really unique and really good, to be honest with you. And it's not expensive either. No, it's think. not. For for what I had anyway, which was a nine year and a twelve year, the twelve year being a finish in Pinot Noir, it was yeah. really impressive because I oh, geez, I want to say they were like thirty five and maybe fifty bucks respectively. Something That's stupid insane. like that. And they were really good. I sent uh, Joel, who couldn't join us tonight, I sent him a sample of the... Actually, I think it might have been both, to be honest with you. Um, And he was really impressed with me. He thought they were great. Because he's, you know, really big into a vanilla bomb. And I think that those just bring a ton of sweet caramel and vanilla. And I was like, he's got to try these. And he was pretty into them. And for me, they were just like... I didn't know going into it that they were going to be anywhere near decent yeah and I, I knew nothing about bull run and then i looked into the product a little bit i was like oh okay i see what's going on with these so let me just try it out it's not bourbon whatever nine-year-old age dated american whiskey hey holy shit it's good how do you complain about that i mean mm-hmm. and then i saw your review pop up this morning or yesterday whenever it was with the what was yours 11 year yeah, yeah, 11 year and then a two and a half years in Oregon Pinot. So pretty old, all things considered. Yeah. Really just cool stuff. Yeah. It, it was fun, though. I I, I don't know. Uh, immediately after pouring it out, this was like pure dessert. And I was like, oh, you know, in a way, yeah. I'm cloying. But it was kind of, you know, that's one of the things I like to do. It, it's nice not knowing every finite detail through those first couple of tastes when you're trying to get those big notes down. Yep. Yeah, I really like to do the deep dive after I've got familiar with it. I think that's wise. I think that's wise. Yeah, did. I think that they are. Uh, they're doing a pretty good job. Yeah, excited to see what they do. 
that's yeah i mean that's a pretty good price too like like i'm i'm really happy i've been buying buffalo trace single barrels and knob creek single barrels for a long time just because they they aren't cheap but they represent so much value for what you right. get um and i think bull run is going to end up on that list and, and granted my sample size is one you know i could be mm -hmm. i had one great sample well yours is also from a single barrel select too it wasn't just like a shelfy product Some random yeah so i mean we got to be mindful of this like the statistics there but it's kind of cool it's fun yep maybe someday we'll pick a bull run that'd be cool let's get some emails out to oregon and see what the hell goes on oh man there's another fruit fly where are these guys coming from sorry um yeah i have family in oregon maybe it'd be a good reason to go out and visit if you can get us a single barrel of that I'd say that'd be a pretty goddamn awesome reason. I will uh, I will send them an email. We will Good see enough for me. Out of it. But yeah, this was... Uh... Man, well, I'm glad you like the rums. I really... I was hesitant. Like I told you, like, don't drink these beforehand because like, I want to see your... Like, yeah, you know, I want to see if you throw up and or die on stream. Yeah, because like, a lot of people in the Bourbon Pursuit Discord, like it sounds like, like funky rum is like not popular. Or like... People no, it doesn't seem to be. Um, so I kind of assumed, being Mr. Bourbon Finder and all, that maybe that would hold true for you. But it, it's kind of exciting to see that, uh, especially the doc. Like that was awesome. That's yeah. You've you've taken quite literally the rum bull by the horns, because um, that's that's as potent as it gets. At least now we'll see. We might try and push the envelope, but that's what you can buy right now. And and honestly, they try and not many people buy that. Yeah, it was interesting stuff. It was all pretty fun. Uh, it was really cool that you gave me a good array of stuff, too. So I get to go through the triple X stuff is both. Those are your, your single barrels, right? From our bourbon or no, it, or, uh, well, more or less. So a panel of us pick it for our rum. It's a okay. group project. I um, mean, the fun part is some of the panelists come and go. There's some core panelists um, myself. Um, there's probably three or four guys who are always involved as well as Jonas and find drams who's the retailer importer for us um but then some people come and go so it's, it's always an organic project that's you know every time it's a little bit different and and we're gonna go you know we're talking about what do we do when we hit the uh the double digits and stuff like that but it's uh that's that's not strictly a me project there's a ton of people involved with that one and that one's a that one's a treat to do every time especially because our broker has just so much crazy rum to pick from it's really interesting stuff either way. I mean, something that, so it, can I assume that the numbers indicate the batch or batch? Yeah. Yeah. So we did triple X one in December of 2018. It shipped. Okay. Well, actually we did it like October of 2018. It arrived in early 2019. Then we did two and three um, together as kind of a batch, but the, you know, it's basically a run. So you know that, when triple X seven hits that it is the seventh in the series. And we're going to kind of go from there. And the, the whole vision behind that has been, there's nothing you need. Um, there's nothing you don't need in the rum. There's nothing you don't need on the label. It's all, um, it's undosed. It's unfiltered. It's un additive free. The label. Utilitarian just rum it. at its finest. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of fun. Doc is, even more that, but it was so potent that we decided to like put a little fire on the front to let people know it's dangerous. That makes sense. Um, Con Forty has a great question. Any new R rums in the queue? Um, I have to be a little cryptic here. I can't say yes, but I can tell you that if you are looking to buy more rum in the future, uh, you will not be sad. Con Forty is a big rum fan. He is probably right. one of the few from the discords that we frequent that will get involved with damn near any rum. Good. That's awesome. You should yeah. uh, you should stop by our rum, the subreddit for rum. Because, I mean, there's a lot of people like you. And also, um, the cool part is, like, anyone could be a panelist. Like, we get a lot to sample. It's, it's super fun to be like, hey, you've been here a while. You really like rum like you want to taste some rums like you'll pick the next one and stuff which is is super cool you want to get docked on you want to get rummed on let's do yeah. it you want to get docked like 
which is something that like some guy in a trench coat like tells you in a parking lot outside mm-hmm. the bowling alley, um, but only in the rain. It would be a fucking bowling alley too, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. All right, we're looking at like about an hour and fifteen here, Jay. What do you say we start uh, dialing this thing back in? Yeah, and say some goodbyes to some of these fine folks who decided to watch me drink uh, flaming bananas. Yeah, well, I mean, I think it was super cool. I'm glad that you put yourself on the line. I think uh, maybe in a couple of weeks or a month, we'll we'll get a couple more bourbon people, and we'll see if they uh, if they enjoy it like you do. Yeah, um, and maybe we we'll throw some other weird spirits in there too. I think that you know we drink a lot of bourbon. We're gonna continue to drink a lot of bourbon, but sometimes True. it's fun to to stray a little bit. Yeah, I think um, it would be good to venture into some agave stuff with some of these other guys to maybe. Uh, especially uh, Jordan, who's pretty big into disgusting scotch. I mean, uh, certain types of scotch. There you go. I think it'd be good to throw some as Cal in front of the, some of these guys and maybe get a couple of people in. Even if we have three or four people in the green room, we send them each yeah. uh, a different sample, pull them in, do a, a quick taste thing, a little Q&A, and kick them the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like it. I think... Uh... You know, bourbon drinker drinks rum is fun. I think that, uh, I think we'll keep it up. I think it's a good idea. Cool. Well, I think, uh, do we have next week's schedule? Should we talk about that yet? Yeah, I, I think, uh, maybe we'll leave next week a secret. We got some stuff, but we're not 100%. So we'll, uh, look for that maybe tomorrow or, uh, or Friday. But in the meantime, thanks guys for stopping by. Um, the updates for our bourbon stuff will hit Reddit tomorrow. I'll tweet about it too if you miss it. Um, long story short, Russell's uh, Smooth Ambler, also Knob Creek, some stuff in the secret. Um, if you want to catch me, you can find me by email. You can find me on Twitter. Um, Instagram is take.review, T-A-K-E, or my website, T-A-K-E.review, uh, free. Stop on by. Um, and John, why don't you take us home? Sounds good. So thanks to everybody that came in, hung out. We had a good time. Tried some really weird rum. Uh, thanks, Jay, again for the samples. That was cool. I like doing all that stuff. It's really cool to try new stuff out, especially get to try it out with you guys. And uh, especially the guys who already know what all this stuff is. It's fun to kind of experience that with uh, a crowd. And uh, at the same time, I'm looking forward to doing some more stuff that's a little bit different. Maybe get some of you guys involved with it too so we can kind of expand everybody's horizons a little bit at the same time. And uh, if you're looking to get some more of my stuff, I'm on uh, thebourbonfinder.com, Instagram at thebourbonfinder. I also run the whiskey net, which we use as a discord hub to kind of connect all whiskey. Well, not just whiskey, but you know, people in the spirits world who are looking to be uh, content creators and grow their communities. We all kind of get together there, chat, hang out, have a good time. So I guess, uh, well, we're not going to re- uh, really reveal what's coming up next week yet. I don't know, but we'll figure it out and then we'll let you know. Uh, and we'll see you uh, either in discord or on social. Thanks guys. Cheers.